Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that's gonna explain to you one of the most beneficial and important things that you can be doing for your garden now, preseason, in order to ensure a bountiful supply of nutrient-rich produce come this upcoming growing season. And that is to apply the JDOM microbial solution in exactly the way that I'm going to explain. So I'm gonna say some things about it and then I'm gonna take you in the basement and show you exactly how to make this stuff even though it's cold outside and even though it's inside and you will see, okay? So, uh, first we have to understand something though. We have to understand that no matter what you put into the soil, in terms of manures or leaf mold or compost or bone meal or blood meal or whatever all stuff that you put in there, none of it is directly absorbable by the plant. It must first pass through the digestive tracts of a complex web of microorganisms. Bacteria and fungi have to first eat it, and then the protozoa and the nematodes eat the bacteria and fungi, and then the arthropods eat those. It's a complex web of interconnectivity, and every step along the way, nutrients are being unlocked and uh, made available in the exact form that the plant actually can use. So your success or failure as a uh, natural farmer, a steward of the land, an organic gardener, is uh, dependent upon the microorganisms. So the number one thing that you can do to ensure success is to ensure that you have a thriving and bountiful and diverse community of microorganism, microorganisms within your soil. Now, how do we do that? We are going to make the brew as hopefully you've already watched the first video I made on how to make this stuff. So you were making it over the summer. Yes. But now we're going to make it indoors, even though it's cold uh, outside. And so I'm going to explain some things to you about the temperature. You will see, uh, based upon the, the experimentation, how temperature matters big time. Temperature is so important when we're talking about brewing microorganisms. All right. So let us go into the basement. I'm going to show you exactly how to make this stuff. And then we're going to come back and I will tell you exactly how to use it and why. Okay, my friends, first thing we got to do is fill the bucket with the water and then we let it sit for about 24 hours to off gas the chlorine. This is important. Next thing we want to do is take about a handful of potatoes. We don't need to get hung up on the exact measurement. About a handful, small handful is plenty. And then we're going to boil them. Uh, for about 20 minutes uh, until they get nice and soft and this helps it to assimilate better So after it cools down a bit, then we're going to put it into the blender Then we're going to add one tablespoon of sea salt The sea salt is the thing you do want to measure so one tablespoon and the sea salt has 82 different minerals in it And it's like a wonderful mineral supplement for our soil and for our plants Then we're just going to blend it up a bit now if you don't have a blender i'll I'll show you what to do here in just a moment. That's okay. I like to use a blender. Uh, it just makes things a lot easier and um, more effective. So then we're going to take our leaf mold. And you can see here the leaf mold that I gathered in the fall is thriving. It's got all kinds of fungal hyphae and mycelium all around it. It is loving life. And you can see because I've kept it somewhat moist with a breathable lid that uh, all the nice fuzzy white stuff is what we want. All right. So now uh, next I'm going to take a paint strainer like this for the five gallon buckets and then I'm just going to take about a, a handful of the uh, leaf mold soil and put it into the paint strainer and then here's the important part I'm going to take an aquarium heater this one is made for a 10 gallon aquarium and I'm going to set it at 75 degrees and then I'm going to put it into the bucket this is important guys and I will show you here in a moment why it's so important but you want to get the aquarium heater for doing it indoors that's the major difference uh, then we're going to pour the slurry through the paint strainer and uh, once we pour it through then we're going to agitate it real nice. Now if you didn't use a blender that's okay you just want to physically massage and break up uh, the potato and that's going to help to assimilate everything into the brew and then I just suspend the brew uh, by the bucket handle like this and uh, then you put the lid on. Very important to put the lid on and I will show you why. Okay, so here we are 36 hours after inoculation and we can see already that the microorganism activity is really beginning to happen because remember guys, these microorganisms are doubling their population every 20 minutes. That is exponential growth and the byproduct of their growth is these bubbles. So we use the bubbles to tell us exactly when the maximum capacity. So here we are at 48 hours after inoculation. That's only 12 hours after the previous uh, footage. 
and we can see this one is thriving. The bubbles are happening, all kinds of microorganism activity, very vigorous, uh, very full of life. Right now, is it is at its peak. This is when we want to use it. This is the peak brew, guys, because watch here. Only six hours later, after the last one, at 55 hours here, it has begun to degrade, and you can see the decomposition and the death of the microorganisms has begun to happen. Uh, because once they reach critical mass and the food gets used up, they die off very quickly. So look here, we are six hours later from the previous one, and we can really notice a lot of uh, bubbles are gone. There's not the vigorous foam and activity that there was before because they've used up the food source. And so now uh, the things are dying. This is way past its prime. Still go ahead and use it, but it's way past its prime. Now here we are 24 hours after its peak at 72 hours. And we can see that there is virtually no bubbles. And this is way past its peak. This has become uh, not effective for us. We don't. We can still use this, still pour it on the garden, but this is way past its peak. We're not getting uh, what we want from this. Okay, so how important is heat? What happens if I don't use a heater? Well, I will show you. Heat, the temperature, is so vital when culturing microorganisms. So here, I never plugged in the heater. And this is at about 55 degrees. And so you can see no uh, bubble activity ever begun to even happen. Just this uh, thin, this film, this scum, uh, the bacterias and molds and fungi. Yes, there's still microorganisms in there for sure, but it's not the ones that we want. We want the ones that are producing the nice, vigorous bubbles. This is a fail, and it's all due to the temperature because we never plugged in the heater. Guys, it's very important, the temperature. Okay, so now that you've made the microbial solution, now you apply it straight. Preferably, you apply it pure. You could also dilute it one to one with water or one to five if you have to, but you soak your garden beds in the Jadam microbial solution five times prior to planting. And this, we want it to get deep in there. So if it's right as it's raining or before it's raining, whatever you can do to make it carry it deep into the soil, that's what we want. And we want to apply this five times prior to planting because after planting, then we don't apply it any stronger than one to 20 dilution. But without plants in the ground pre-season, we can do it full strength. And that is going to ensure that when those roots start to set down, they're going to be able to form the relationships with the microorganisms that they need to thrive. That's going to enable them to extract more nutrients from the soil. That's going to enable them to conserve water. That's going to enable them to thrive and produce nutrient-rich food for you and your family. You will see this is very important, perhaps the most important of all the microbial applications. If you only do these five before planting, before the season, uh, and you did none after that, these would be more important. Do you understand what I'm saying? So make sure that you're making this happen into your beds. All right. So guys, that's pretty much it. If you feel like you gained something from the video, give it a thumbs up, share the video with anyone that needs the knowledge. Let me know if you guys have any questions or anything. Uh, leave a comment. First thing that comes to mind. So the season is coming upon us.